Mike's Daily Podcast. Yeah, no weird intro today. No, we're done with that. And no, this show is clean thing. You know it's pretty much clean. I bleep all the bad words out. But it is episode 860, and it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on Earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley today. Part three of my into an interview with the wonderful singer, songwriter, guitarist, Sam Cohen. Mike's Daily Podcast. And we'll hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer, and Twitter's doing something interesting. And then... Mike's Daily Podcast. We'll find out about that. So tonight I'm going to take BART. That stands for Bay Area Rapid Transit. And I heart the fact that it exists because I hate driving my car into San Francisco but the ride is sometimes hard because you get these weirdos riding next to you that smell like a marijuana bar Mike's Daily Podcast I'm going to the Podcastro to record a podcast that's an art Mike's for a show called Daily Your Nerd Side Podcast and marijuana is not bad yeah I'm not saying that. It just stinks to me. I do not like the smell or people that have just huffed, uh, not huffed, toked. (laughs) Mike, you're confusing toked with huffed. Those are two completely different things. I apologize. Look who just walked in. Hello, my God. This is Jolly. It's too hard to give stuff to advisor, and I've never done any drugs. You you never drank alcohol. Alcohol is a drunk drug. It's a drug, and it makes you drunk. Freudian slip. Mike Matthews, you're like quoting like Shakespeare now. I'm quoting a psychiatrist. Not really. I am mentioning, I'm evoking the name of a psychiatrist. Psychologist? Whatever. Mike Matthews, anyway. So, do you think I should put a marijuana bar inside the gift shop of Cafe anyway? Hmm. That's interesting. Now, there's a bunch of codes and a bunch of things we'd have to sign and uh, fees we'd have to pay. I'd say no. Okay. Look who else just walked in. Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Foreman. And this is John Deere, the engineer, Mike. That's perfectly okay if you don't want to have a marijuana bar. But you know, there's some really good weed out there. Oh, some serious bud? Yeah. Yeah. Neither one of us know what we're talking about, do we? I don't know. You're an engineer. Have you deconstructed the... THC and the other elements that make up the high that you get from uh, marijuana. No, but that's something I should put on my project list. Ah, oh, the project list. So much fun. Yes. Yeah, so the last show that I did of this Your Nerd Side podcast, host Aaron Fonseca, he fed me. He gave me a lot of great dinner. He and Anna Maria, they fed me there in their house. It was very nice, very friendly, and and congenial. And uh, I ate though quite a few different foods all at once. We sort of they eat quickly there because they got kids, and kids, you know, their attention span is like that. It's over, and they got something else has got to entertain them and whatnot. So. I'm eating the food really fast, and then my stomach is all making these weird noises during the podcast. So what Aaron decides to do, Mr. Production Whiz, he drops in all these sound effects of me um, passing gas. That's so nice. So And and then he also makes fun of the fact that I'm bald. So I'm going to really have fun going back and doing this podcast tonight. I think I might give him a little bit of... uh, hell for all of that but one thing i would like to point out is that this podcast is now 97th on the indie rock chart list on mixcloud 97 Woo! we're just three above 100 if i know my math and that's because of the interview part one that we did with daniel g Harmon last week so you know podcasting is its own reward And Twitter, oh, podcasters got to use Twitter. I certainly do. I'm at uh, 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 Mike Talks 
is my Twitter handle. Twitter is spiffing up its homepage in hopes it will get more people to flock to the service. The new homepage features some of Twitter's most popular content categories, including TV shows and stars and cute animals. This according to USA Today. Twitter is making a play for people who are not logged into the service yet. Even though it started back in 2006. What the heck? Remember when it started? It was the whole draw of Twitter was that you could link it to your phone. Back then we really didn't have smartphones yet. 2006, did we? So we just would, you could text to a text number, a Twitter text number. And you could write, you know, like, I'm stuck in line at Safeway. This sucks. And then, boom, it would appear online on Twitter, which people would be accessing on their PCs and laptops back then. It was pre-tablet, pre-all that. And now, of course, it, it, it's an app on your smartphone. And people use it there on their smartphones. Well, it, and a lot of things were like that back then. It, a lot of th- companies and apps started with completely different draws. Like Instagram, the whole point of Instagram was that you could send a cute little picture to your friend on their phone if they had the app. Nowadays, Instagram is like a Facebook. You go on there and you see, or Twitter, and you see a constant feed of people's pictures and it turned into something else. Facebook originally, remember the whole poking thing? That's like gone. I never was poked, but that was like the big draw. You could poke people. Ooh, kinky. But anyway, the San Francisco company Twitter is looking to reignite growth. Part of its strategy is to build the world's largest daily audience. Ooh, we like that word daily here at Mike's Daily Podcast. Twitter has 288 million users, but says about 125 million more visit Twitter.com each month without signing in, without Having an account. Experts say that Twitter, though, has huge growth potential. It will reach more than half of internet users over the next five years. Experts are also saying, despite early signs of a slowdown in user growth, Twitter remains quite early in terms of overall internet or mobile phone installed base penetration. Kinky. In addition, user growth on an absolute basis actually appears steady and predictable. Twitter is becoming a core part of the consumer web mosaic. Wow, no wonder they bought up like San Francisco, like all of it. The new new homepage that Twitter has been testing for months is rolling out first to U.S. users on desktop, desktop computers. Remember those? Oh, wait, I'm using one right now. Desktop. What do you think about all that? Desktop computers. And have you ever traveled on BART? And or any public transit where people reek to high heaven, or do you think Shelley should put a marijuana bar in the gift shop? I'm like totally like thinking about it, and just like I'm working out all the numbers and I'm crunching them and thinking about the overhead and all that stuff. Uh huh. You know, Benita and the disgruntled fiddle player learned to talk to each other recently at uh, they were going to go to the Olive Garden but then they changed their mind but I was discussing how married couples when they eat in public they don't talk some of them and I think that's very depressing and I was like in that in a relationship in my last marriage not talking to the other person at public places Mike Matthews that's like so sad it is Shelly when I fall in love it's going to be forever. And the guy's going to always talk to me when we're at dinner at some place. And we're always going to eat out and it's going to be like really fancy. Excellent. That'll be great. I look forward to that. Hey, you guys, do you eat out a lot? Yeah, Mike, we eat out all the time. You know, some fact, we're going to eat out tonight. If you'd like to come out with us, we'll go out and eat out. And we'll talk while we're eating because eating in silence defeats the whole purpose. You should be talking and not enjoying your food. Wow, John Deere, the engineer. That's an interesting statement. Also, the last show, Valentino and Bison Bentley, they revealed that they used to park cars on Broadway. Wow, Mike, I love Broadway. The music, the lights, the stars, the dancing, the drama. Yeah, all those things are pretty amazing. By the way, if you want to get Broadway tickets or... Oh, wait. Do this first. 
And now, a big thanks to our sponsor. Yeah, Broadway tickets or concert tickets, all the big tours this year. Go to clickitticket.com. And right now, Mike's Daily Podcast people, you get a special discount. Get 5% off your purchase by typing in the promo code Mike's Daily. You can find that link at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Click a ticket. Dot com. Look for the little banner there on the website. And speaking of Mike's Daily Podcast.com, go there to find links to where to listen to this show. We are in iTunes. If you go to iTunes, make sure to subscribe to us there and comment on the show and rate the show. If you do that, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. You can also find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, Spreaker, Player FM, Ameris Stream. I am on the air in Connecticut doing a morning show from 6 to 10. And there is a link to where to listen to that show at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. I'm also on the weekends playing country music. A link to where to find me there on that internet radio station at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Tell your friends about the show through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Yelp, Tumblr. Links to where to find us on all of those at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. And if you are going to buy anything on Amazon, Go through mikesdailypodcast.com first and click on the Amazon link and then buy something because that helps support us. There's the blog, the daily podcast picture. All my past interviews, too, are at mikesdailypodcast.com. If you would like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, email me at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. And you can also tell us what you think about Twitter or uh, uh traveling on part and all that stuff you can email me and we read your comments on the section emails for me mail mike's daily podcast at gmail.com but now part three of my sam cohen interview into an interview cool i'm speaking with sam cohen we're talking about his album cool it and about some of the people he's played with you and you played with CeeLo. On his album? Not, not with him, just on some recordings. Um, I'm good friends with John Hill, the producer who does some CeeLo stuff. Um, and honestly, all, all the like big time stuff that I've played on is, was generally had something to do with John ah. or directly because of John. But uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that I wasn't, wasn't working directly with him, just playing on tracks that were for him. I see. And, you know, I have never been to Brooklyn. What am I missing? Because aren't you in Brooklyn? I am in Brooklyn. What's it like, Sam? Uh, I think you'd like it. There's lots of music venues. A lot of them are closing down. There's lots of condos going up in place of old music venues. Oh. Uh, it's an interesting time to be here. New York's uh, an interesting place to live right now. It's getting very fancy. A lot of affordable housing is being replaced with condos. And, uh... You know, it's making it a more, like, unilaterally rich place. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of... So that's kind of lame. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it is. Like, Williamsburg, which used to be kind of like a sceny place with music venues and, you know, good pizza and stuff like that, and a few shops popping up, and it sort of had, like, an edge to it. Now it's just, like, Soho for slightly younger people with equal wealth. Oh. Uh, it's kind of gross, <laughs> but I don't know. Ask anyone from here about that stuff, and they're going to vent unless they're super rich. That's kind of happening here. I, I live near Oakland, and Oakland has uh-huh. it. You see that transformation. There's okay. It's really bad. Then it gets kind of good, and you get some people, younger people, that can live there. And all of a sudden, these new kind of different restaurants pop up and places and shops and then bam it's rich people <laughs> totally totally because all of a sudden the, like uh the times or whoever is like oh there's a scene popping up here <laughs> and a bunch of investors are like oh yeah this is funky let's buy this and uh you know we'll, we'll keep it kind of funky but like they're not interesting so they just like come and like shit shows up to cater to their needs and it's all, you know, five-star blah, blah, and, like, nothing cool. Sam. Uh, well, so, but other than that, Brooklyn's pretty cool, huh? And and there's, um... There's a lot of cool stuff here, and, man, are there a lot of great artists and musicians here. I mean, that's, that's what keeps me here. It's just, I'm spoiled. Like, the people I can work with and just, yeah. like, you know, throw a band together of the most amazing people and everyone doing incredible things, but just down to earth 
interested in collaborating the, the pool to draw from here is so deep in terms of artistic um, all kinds of artistic things movies music writers painters what time of year should I come visit what what's a good what when do you think is like the weather uh, I would say spring which for us starts in like uh, mid April it just started a couple of days ago okay or fall maybe fall probably fall Okay, because I went in August to New York, and it was pretty hot. I had a good time. But... Yeah, the trash probably smells the worst <laughs> in August. I'd come in fall, like, yeah. Okay. October, you go to Prospect Park or Central Park, and that's nice. Tell me about the recreation of the last waltz that you you uh, direct. Is it? Aren't you the music director for that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So my friend Ramey Egan had the idea to start doing this. Um, about four years ago and we've been doing it the past three years <clears throat> excuse me and it's it's like uh, it's a night I look forward to all year it's really just it, I don't know why it transcends being a tribute concert which you know doesn't uh, even appeal to me really that much the idea of that but he asked me to do it and he told me the people who were already involved which was Joe Russo on drums who plays in further uh, Marco Benevento on keys, a bunch of the anti ballas horns guys, Stuart Bogey in the lead in the horn section, Scott Metzger on guitar, me on guitar, mm-hmm. our friend Dave Dryowitz on bass is in Ween and Marco's band. And then from there we started pulling in more friends and fleshing out the band and figuring out guests and uh, Nels Klein has done it every year. We keep adding interesting people. Dang. Like Kevin Morby uh, did it this past year and we're starting working on his new record together tomorrow. So it's just amazing. It brings so many people together uh, in an amazing way. Lots of people have joined each other's bands who met through the last waltz. And it's just like, it's about 30 musicians involved year to year. It's just a giant love fest. It's so fun. Okay, forgive me. At last waltz, isn't that the, the band? The- oh yeah, I should clarify. Yeah, the band's farewell concert was called The Last Waltz. And then Martin Scorsese shot a movie Right. Documenting it. It's this pretty kind of legendary rock movie. So we're doing, which is actually edited down the movie. We do almost the complete last waltz. We do all but two songs from a, what was a four hour concert. Wow. So you do the night they dr- drove old Dixie down. No, wait. No, the wait. We do both. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and uh, up on Cripple, Cripple Creek. Yep, that's the first song. Ooh. Did you ever have a chance to meet... Lee Von Helm? I did not. A lot of people I know met him and played with him. Because um, he was like a pretty approachable Woodstock guy. And, and I do a lot of work in Woodstock and have a lot of friends up there. But I never met him myself, unfortunately. Or Robbie Robertson. Huge hero of mine. Did you meet, ever meet Robbie Robertson? No, I've never met any of them. I, we nearly met Dark Hudson once. He needed help moving, and at the time, Apollo Sunshine owned a van and trailer. So we were uh, on the wrong coast to do that for him. Oh, wow. So I've, never, nev- I've never met any of them. And Sam, when are you going to be doing that last waltz? Um, it, I believe this year it's going to be the Saturday following Thanksgiving. Ooh, cool. All right. And is there usually a particular place, or does it change? Um, we've done it the last two years at the Capitol Theater in Port Chester. The first year we did it at the Warfield in San Francisco. No kidding. And uh, this year, I'm not totally sure. We haven't started making plans for it yet. Oh, I want to keep an eye out for that. And I want to play The Last Dream. I, I, this almost has like a 60s vibe to it. I imagine being conceived to this. And then I got kind of grossed out. But uh, <laughs> this is, I, like yeah. the, I like this song, Sam. Thanks. Yeah, this one actually, I, for me, listening to my own record, which I don't really do very often anymore because I'm done making it, mm-hmm. but um, this one for me always had a little different vibe from the rest of the record. This is the only one that uh, it was written way before the rest of the material, and Yellowbirds had been doing it live for about a year before I started working on this record. So this one we recorded as a band and had played it a lot as a band, and it really has... Um, the Yellowbird stamp on it, Josh and Brian and Annie's playing. 
is pretty clear. Or actually, I ended up redoing the bass. Josh and Brian's playing is very <laughs> uh, prominent on this one. Um, yeah, and it, it just has a different vibe. It's more like a yellow bridge vibe. Let's listen to it. It's Last Dream from his album, Cool It, coming out April 28th. Sam Cohen. And where can they find out more info about you? Come I don't know. You can Facebook message me. I'll tell you anything you want to know. You know, wh- so when I look you up on Facebook, I typed in... Uh-huh. So is there a spe- is there like a trick? <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that hard? I figured that might be hard because I have a really generic, like, Jewish guy name. Um, <laughs> it's just if you do, like, Facebook.com backslash Sam Cohen Music. There you go. To my page. Sam Cohen Music. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the same way because there's like a million Mike Matthews's. In fact, there's they're mostly good looking guys. In fact, uh, one of them's like a health nut guy who, who's super buff and he writes health books and stuff. But that's not me. Dang it. Okay, so Sam Cohen's last stream on Mike's Daily Podcast.
<laughs> that is Sam Cohen as we go outside of Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. The next show is the finale of my into an interview with singer, songwriter, producer, and guitarist Sam Cohen. And here's today's podcast picture. Now there is this place in Berkeley called the Musical Offering Cafe and CD Shop. They carry a huge selection of classical music. It's primarily classical. There's some jazz. There's some opera. You know, they're basically everything inspired by classical music is in their little CD shop. Now, that's one half of this room. The other half is this wonderful little cafe where they make delicious sandwiches, have coffee, drinks. And I'm doing this plug here right now, not getting anything in return, just telling you about it. If you're ever in Berkeley, check it out because it is a one of a kind place and not many of these places can exist. Probably a place like this couldn't exist if it wasn't in Berkeley. But, you know, anyway, they've got this awesome uh, uh, chamber music uh, group that performs on Sundays, like from one to three. They're called the Town Quartet. And we were there, my German friend Petra and I, She's visiting America for the next couple of weeks, and she was in the Bay Area for a couple days, and I took her over there to Berkeley and to show her this place, and they were playing music. It was so nice, and then we are in the CD shop listening to the music playing, the live music playing, and I saw Nipper. And if you are an avid fan of this show, a regular listener, you remember that when Basil the Boxer was going through all of his ordeal after his paw got all tore up and I had to pay for stitches and the operation and it was such a sad time for Basil but uh, when he was wearing the cone around his neck to keep him from licking his paw I thought that that looked like a reverse nipper like a, a, a nipper is that dog that's looking into the old phonograph player RCA had it as like a logo for their company And there's a nipper sitting there, and I'm petting the nipper in the picture. So there we go. Nipper, it all comes full circle. And I also discovered that Lagunitas Brewery, they've got a logo where they have a a pit bull with a cone around its head because of some injury, and it's staring at a guitar amplifier. So that's also sort of in the exact same vein and also what I was thinking about. How strange how it all comes back around, doesn't it, Basil? See that picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com. Mike Matthews, I'm like so happy that Basil the Boxer is doing well. And I can't wait to put my pot bar inside of the cafe anyway at the last place on earth. Yeah, that's great. We're going to have a great time with the pot bar. No, we're not going to do a pot bar, Shelly. Really. I'm in a pot pie bar, Mike. <laughs> ah, ah, you got me. Why are you people still laughing? It wasn't that funny. Come on, shut the f*** up. Sorry. Next show, the finale of my into an interview with Sam Cohen. And I don't think you pronounce his name like that. Cohen. That's better. And we will also hear from Benita, the rodeo queen, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.